Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live Coffee Talk Show. I'm Michelle Kui. I'm a confident leadership coach working with negative self-talkers to get them feel more confident and, and let go of that fear for judgment. So I do this live coffee talk show every Wednesday morning at eight o'clock Pacific time. This is where I bring you love, courage, and connection. And these my, my guests are all, these are all real stories. So my purpose is to bring you inspiration so that you can start acting and do something for you. Um, so today with me, I have Amy Willis. Um, she is a sobriety and mindset coach who support women struggling with their relationship to drinking, um, who are looking to enter and sustain sobriety while designing a life that they don't want to escape from. Amy co-create change in her client's life by working on mindset transformation, habit change, and resilient building. Amy seeks to empower her clients not only by supporting them in creating change, but also through teaching powerful, simple, and effective tools that can put to use immediately. In addition to being a dual certified coach, Amy is also a certified meditation teacher and a certified EFT, emotional freedom technique practitioner and brings these uh, modality to her coaching practice. When Amy is not working, she's likely to be reading, moving her body, spending time with her friends, planning her next trip, or drinking coffee with her cat, Captain. Amy calls Toronto home and work with her clients globally. Here is Amy. Welcome, Amy. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here um, and to connect with your community. Thank you so much. I think this is a really great time of the year, or well, great time of the decade, where we're experiencing something that's very different. And many of us get stranded at home. And, you know, there's so many things that's going on. And even just for someone who's not, who doesn't have this habit of drinking, it's already hard enough to deal with that fear, anxiety, and just, you know, uncertainty. So tell us about your experience, because you're a sobriety coach, and what was that like? Um, well, my practice has been a, a bit busier lately, um, kind of like what you said, you know, we're in an environment right now where there's a lot more fear. Um, there are feelings of panic, feelings of anxiety, people have a lot of stress, and all of those feelings are totally legit, right? We're in this really uncertain time. We don't know when it's going to end. We don't know what things are going to look like next. And if you are like a lot of people, you don't necessarily have healthy coping strategies to manage what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And so we look to things that are available to us like alcohol or food or sex or drugs or whatever it is to create little pockets of relief for ourselves and to even just press pause on the intensity of what we're feeling in the moment. And so I'm sure this is true in the US, but it's definitely true in Canada right now. Like people are drinking at unprecedented rates right now. Um, liquor sales and alcohol sales have skyrocketed in the months of March and April. And again, I think it's the same in the US, but um, in Canada, the liquor store is considered an essential service. And so people are using it as such um, there's unfettered access basically to as much alcohol as you want and instead of you know putting limitations like grocery stores have put on toilet paper people are just able to buy as much alcohol as they want and they're home they don't have anywhere to be tomorrow they don't have anything else really to do and so they're drinking mm -hmm. um, so my role right now is to really support people in challenging some of the assumptions around drinking and what it does um, in your life and providing actual healthy coping strategies for folks so that they don't have to look to something that ultimately is not supporting them and not supporting their wellness, mm -hmm. either in the moment or in the long term. Mm -hmm. what, what inspired you to, to do this? Like, what inspires you to become a sobriety coach? 
Yeah, great question. Um, so as you might imagine, I personally struggled with alcohol addiction pretty severely for about 15 years. So I'm more than three and a half years sober at this point. And so I am intimately aware of what struggling with addiction looks like. Um, and one of the pivotal um, situations or instances that happened in my life was that my father, who also struggled with alcohol addiction really significantly, passed away unexpectedly and related to his drinking. And so I literally had a front row seat to what my life could look like if I stayed on the path that I was on. And so his death was actually a turning point in my life in terms of creating change, entering sobriety and actually living the life that I'm supposed to be living as opposed to living a life where I am out of it and numb and watered down and just not living in my purpose and, and serving other people in the ways that I can now. So it's my own personal experiences that really brought me to this work. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you so much for sharing. And I'm so sorry to hear about your, your father. Um, but I wanted to, I think it's important to go back to that specific moment where you were drinking, right? You were habit, it, it was something that you find pleasure in. But then going back and watching your father going, you know, going from having, going through that journey, what, what were your feeling like in that moment? Like, what was going on inside? Um, when my dad was still alive or after he passed? Or when, 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 he you're watching, you're, when you're watching all this happening, like she, he's passing and, and it's a result of drinking, his own yeah. drinking habit. What yeah. was it going on for you inside? Um, well, I mean, when he was also drinking in his life, I was also drinking and I wasn't at a place where I was even ready to look at my own behavior and my own relationship to drinking. So it didn't really... It wasn't something I thought about. And it really was his death that made me look more closely at what I was doing. Um, obviously losing a parent unexpectedly is horrible. Um, and actually my addiction got a lot worse after he died because I didn't have any healthy coping strategies to deal with the intensity of my feelings. And so I drank and I didn't think that I could manage what I was feeling. Um, the feelings felt way too hard for me and I thought they would break me. Mm -hmm. And so on top of feeling, of course, like intense grief and sadness, there was also something inside of me that was saying that I needed to change my life or this was going to be my outcome as well. And like, was there more to my life than just getting drunk and being hungover all the time? And I knew that there was, I just didn't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. how, how did you get there? I mean, I think that's a, that's a very interesting question, right? Because then yeah. we're watching all this unfold and we, we, have, we have a choice of making whether we wanted to cope without grieving, co cope without anxiety and all that uncomfortable feeling about some of our parents passing. Yeah. We can cope it by drinking or we can cope it by something else or to make a change. Yeah. So, so how did you get to that point where, you know what, I know this is what I want and I'm going to start doing it. This is the skills that I need. How, yeah. how did you come to that point? Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because I think when we talk about addiction and we talk about recovery and all of it, there's often the narrative of like, the rock bottom, right? That like terrible thing that happens in your life, whether it's like losing your job or a DUI or whatever it is. And that wasn't my experience. It was really an accumulation of a bunch of smaller instances that made me realize that like I had, I had to create change. Like my, I felt like my life was just slipping through my fingers and that I was wasting everything that I had inside of me because I was prioritizing my drinking. Mm -hmm. And so honestly, like I, I can't even necessarily pinpoint a moment or a day when I was like, okay, this is it, enough is enough, because I had been thinking about it and ruminating on it for such a long time. Mm -hmm. But I think for folks out there who are thinking about creating change, I think the first step is really making a decision. 
So I decided that my life would not have alcohol in it any longer. And, and I, I followed through with that decision. So it really is about recognizing that you want to make change and then committing to that change. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, subsequent steps come into place. So I um, let other people, like a small, small group of people that I trusted implicitly, I let them know what was happening in my life. Most of them didn't even realize that I was struggling so severely with addiction. Um, but I let them know that like I had to do this. Otherwise, I would be in a really bad position down the road. Mm -hmm. So I let other people know. Um, add addiction is really lonely. Recovery can be really lonely. So reaching out, which is actually um, a practice of resilience, and letting people know and asking for their support and accountability can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. And um, beyond that, I mean, it's what I'm about to say is actually quite huge, but I dismantled my life. I looked at every part of my life um, that involved drinking and I made changes. So I looked at um, what I was doing socially. I looked at who I was hanging out with. Um, obviously the folks who, you know, if hanging out with them revolved around drinking and I was no longer doing that, then likely those folks didn't carry on in being in my social circles because it was just too challenging in the early days to be around them while they were drinking. Mm -hmm. um, I took a look, uh, a hard look at the things that I believed to be true about myself, about my relationship to drinking. So I did a lot of mindset work, um, which is really, really important because we know that our thoughts and our beliefs are what inform and influence our actions and our actions are what become our habits. And so really that for me was a crucial part of changing my relationship to drinking and changing my life was getting my um, outside and my inside world in alignment with one another. Um, so yeah, those are some of the things that I did to, to start. And I think uh, piggybacking on the decision that I made, I also made a decision to prioritize my sobriety over everything else. And so with that, um, I created a lot of rock solid boundaries. So if anything challenged my sobriety, it was a no. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just what it looked like for me. And there's lots of ways to enter sobriety and to sustain it. But those are some of the things that worked really well for me. Yeah, I, I love how you brought up, you know, the fact that it, it has to work in the, from the inside out and outside in approach, you know, it, it has to be done both ways. Yeah. So, so in your experience, you know, for me personally, it was really the, the most difficult thing to, to overcome and to, to deal with was the emotional aspect, the inside, that was the most difficult struggle yeah. I had. In your experience, what was the most difficult part for you? Was it the external, you know, re-evaluate re the circle of your friends or, or was it something that's, you know, the emotional aspect that you have, that's going on inside? Which one is harder? Hmm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, because like I said, I overhauled everything really in my life. So it's almost more difficult to pinpoint exactly where the biggest challenge was because so many things changed for me. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely had struggles with ideas around, or I, I think I should say prior to quitting drinking, I really believed that everything in my social life would change. I wouldn't have the same friends. I wouldn't be able to have fun anymore. And so that was like a pretty big struggle. And, and in some ways that's kind of an internal and an external struggle because yeah, the way I socialize did change because I'm not going out to bars until four in the morning and coming home blackout drunk. So that, do, that did change. And yeah, some of my friendships fell away um so that was an external thing but also there's an internal component to that because i believed that alcohol made me fun and alcohol allowed me to connect with people in ways that i couldn't when i was sober and as i got more and more into my sobriety journey i realized that neither of those things were true and so mm -hmm. i had to do a lot of internal work to let go of some of those beliefs that were keeping me stuck and keeping me held in a place where I thought alcohol was like the greatest thing in the world, you know? 
Um, so yeah, hard to say. I don't know if emotionally <laughs> or internal work or external work was harder. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely did struggle with the emotions piece and the, I think I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe in my capacity to handle or manage some of the intense feelings that I was feeling. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I've since learned that like I can feel everything and survive and I can do hard things emotionally and we all can, right? And again, that's, that's the belief work of thinking we can't and believing that to be true, right? So once we shed some of those away, it's pretty miraculous to realize what we're capable of. Yeah. I always believe it's very powerful how we speak to ourselves. You know, we can <laughs> talk ourselves that, you know, you know, my friend's going to leave me. I can't have any friends anymore. They're going to, they're not going to want to hang out with us. Or well, we can talk to ourselves in a more powerful, empowering way, which yeah. will change the whole perspective. Totally. And, you know, I, I, I was reading your bio. What really caught my attention was the EEFT, the Emotional Freedom Technique. Can you tell us more about that? And how do you yeah. incorporate it into oh, your I love coaching? EFT so much. Sorry, I didn't hear what you just said. How do you incorporate it into your coaching session and how do you use it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, it's also called tapping. Um, so a very quick overview, um, it works by um, basically manipulating energy meridians in your body. Um, and you do it by literally using your fingers. So it's like a manual technique and tapping on different points as a way of releasing energy blockages while also pairing that physical action with um, like verbally communicating whatever it is that you're um, dealing with in that moment. So it could be um, a limiting belief that you're holding on to. It could be emotional pain. It could be um, physical pain. It really, you know, there really are no limitations to what you can deal with in EFT. So um, it functions in a lot of ways like acupuncture without the needles. And then it combines almost talk therapy um, by addressing and releasing a lot of the things that we're holding on to. And by doing so, you are addressing some of the subconscious stuff, junk that we're carrying around with us, um, while also calming and like rewiring our brain in a healthy way. So I love EFT, it's so fantastic. Um, and I, yeah, I bring it into client sessions so that I'm all about empowering my clients and I do this in many ways, but one of the ways that I do it in is offering tools. So simple, powerful, effective tools that I can teach to someone easily that once they know it, they can use it and apply it whenever they want. And EFT is one of the tools. So I teach my clients EFT. We often use different scripts. So depending on what it is they're dealing with, um, we'll use it to deal with that issue. And then also they walk away from working with me, knowing how to use EFT on themselves whenever they need it. Mm. I, I think one of my friends actually uh, uh, shared this technique with me and that was the first time I heard it. And we were manifesting into something. She told me to tap on my third eye. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, we were manifesting something and she told me, just tap on your third eye. So we tap together and the next day, like the client just walked in <laughs> right into my hand. Yeah, so it's, um, it's really powerful. And the thing about EFT is it prompts you to address and verbalize the stuff that we're carrying around with us. Because whether or not we say it, it's there. And so the verbalizing uh, really allows us to address and also to release and then simultaneously release some of the energy blockages that we're maybe experiencing around that issue to get us into flow and into alignment, which who doesn't want that, right? Who doesn't want to be in flow and alignment? It feels amazing. So yeah, I love EFT so, so much. Yeah, your your energy just whole change. You know, yeah. as you're talking about the EMT, I can see yeah. how much passion you have about it. I do. Yeah, I totally actually did like a tapping session just to get get my energy to a really good place before I got on the call with you. Mm -hmm. So I use it all the time. 
Yeah, I love it. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious, you know, looking into your, your journey um, as a coach and also, you know, on a professional level, where do you see yourself in like maybe a year from today? Mm -hmm. Hopefully in a different geographical location. <laughs> We're all currently trapped. That, I take that back. We're not trapped. We're safe and sheltered. Um, yeah, I mean, a year from now, um, I see myself having exponentially expanded my impact on the world. I see myself having worked with dozens if not hundreds of awesome women who are ready to take back their lives and step into their power and create change for themselves um i see definitely more offerings that i haven't even envisioned yet um and yeah on a personal and professional level more travel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. I, I love how the fact that we're willing to let go of, you know, what was holding us back, you know, whether it's drinking, whether it's something that's whatever that we're experiencing and we're stepping into the future and that just like our eyes just open, our heart is warm and it just gives give us a lot of passion in moving forward and knowing that this is where we want to go. And I can yeah. see that it's a perfect example of that, you know, on you. Yeah. And so I'm really curious because I think right now there's a lot of people out there who's dealing and coping with this, um, this situation, this pandemic. And some people actually, unfortunately, they lost their jobs. So this is really a really stressful time. What yeah. would be one takeaway that you would like to give them or that you can share today? Oh, um, one of the things that I, I've actually been really reflecting on, and it's been coming up in my meditations, especially over the last couple of days, and it feels powerful, so I think I'm going to share it, um, is really taking this as an opportunity to figure out what's actually important for you in your life. So it, it's almost like a natural break in our regular routines so our lives have been in a lot of ways disrupted but sometimes disruption can be quite powerful because it allows us to create what we really want so this feels like a really great opportunity to actually figure out what we really want and as a second sort of step to that is um and this is what's been coming up in my meditations is how we can really also use this time to fortify ourselves. So fortifying our physical bodies, how can we um, become stronger? How can we boost our immune systems? How can we fortify ourselves mentally and really get into a place where, <clears throat> excuse, me, excuse me, we can manage what's happening in between our ears and get handle on our thoughts and our minds. Um, how can we fortify in terms of connecting to our intuition? How can we fortify our self-sufficiency, right? Not really knowing what's coming around the corner. How can we really lean on ourselves and trust ourselves and build our relationship with ourselves um, in ways that make us feel more prepared if something like this happens again or continues to happen? Mm -hmm. So fortification has been really coming up a lot for me. Um, so that's sort of, I guess, what I'll offer to your community is how can we use this time to really figure out what is truly important and what matters the most to us and how can we really amplify ourselves and prepare ourselves moving forward? Yeah. I, I love that. I love that. I always love the word opportunity because I think every yeah. woman, you know, it's an opportunity for us to learn. Yeah. Um, and, and that moment is, can come in such a way that it requires you to just kind of slow down and take a break. Yeah. Yeah. It's so Some powerful. Of the greatest opportunities I have experienced in my life have been on the heels of some of the most devastating things that have happened in my life right? Like my dad's death, for example, like that shook my entire world. And as a result of that, 
I got sober myself. I totally changed my life. I became a coach. I now work with other women to support them in sobriety and creating change. And I've actually found what I'm supposed to be doing. And so had my dad's death not happened, I for sure would still be in my addiction right now. I just, I just know that there wouldn't have been the same catalyst to create change in my life. So it was devastating, but it also really served as a gift in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I, I'm with you. It's, it's opportunity for growth and learning and reflection. Mm -hmm. And all our experiences count. Um, Every moment of it, it counts. Yeah. 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 So this is a question that I usually throw at my guests and they're kind of like a surprise. And I always ask them, if you, if you can complete the sentence, the world needs more blank. What goes into the blank for you? The world needs more people who are tapped into their intuition. And yeah, people who trust themselves, who can look inward instead of looking outward, particularly women, right? Um, Yeah, people, the world needs more people who are tuned in to themselves Mm -hmm. and like living in alignment. I love it. So where can people find you? People can find me on Instagram at Ms. So M S Amy C Willis. They can also find me at my website, which is Whole and Well. So H O L A N D W E L L dot com. Um, those are the two main ones. And there's links for other social channels up there um, if you're interested in that. But those are the main ones. Yes, and I will include those in the episode notes so people can find you on your Instagram and also on your website. And I love, love your uh, website, by the way. I think it's so, it's very um, pink and I love how you use the word, the, the word uh, whole and well, whole and well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's interesting because when I was first starting my um, coaching practice in my business, like holistic wellness has always been my wheelhouse or always for the last like decade or so. Um, and so I really wanted to like use that as a starting point. Uh, so it got narrowed down to whole and well, but when you say it out loud, it also sounds like whole, like W H O L E. Mm-hmm. And that's another piece that I work on with my clients is like, we are already whole and perfect, right? We are not yes. broken. We don't need to be fixed. We are perfect exactly as we are. And so whole and well kind of works in both of those ways. Yes, 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 yes. We are whole. We don't need to be fixed. And I love that mentality. Yeah. That's right. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for coming and joining me today. It's been a pleasure. And, and you know, I'm sure, you know, my audience will be able to uh, walk away with something very valuable that they can use in their life. Thank you. Awesome. I hope so. Thank you so much again. It was so great chatting with you. Of course. And thank you all for watching and tuning in next week at on Wednesday at eight o'clock in Pacific time for another episode of face Facebook live coffee talk show. And I will see you next time.